this afternoon I'm going to make some tropical granola bars that hopefully will be a simple recipe that children could follow. If you are a high school child, this can be done quite independently as long as there is an adult within the close vicinity, within the house, um, obviously because we will be melting butter and also using the oven. If you are a primary school age child, then this is still a recipe that you'll be able to do, but a little bit more parental supervision will be required. So before I go on with all the ingredients, a little bit of health and safety. Always make sure that you have got a parent to hand and um, to help you with the more difficult stages in the recipe. Make sure that you've got no trip hazards in your kitchen. You want to make sure that the kitchen is as clear as possible for a safe working area. And obviously from a hygiene point of view, we want the work surfaces to be clean with an antibacterial spray or wipe before cooking and then again at the end. Um, we also want to make sure that we are hygienic, so if you have long hair then you need to tie it back or remove the hair from your face. Wearing an apron to protect yourself, keep your clothes clean but also keep the food, the bacteria on your clothes away from the food. And then we are going to make sure that we are washing our hands with an antibacterial soap before we commence the cooking. So, I'm going to wash my hands first of all. Obviously I'm not going to say happy birthday because singing is not one of my forte's. Um, but you are doing that for approximately 20 seconds, making sure that you're doing your wrists as well. Now that the hands are clean, we are ready to start preparing our ingredients. First thing we're going to do is weigh everything out. So you can use digital scales, as I have here, or the analog scales where you're looking at the dial. Um, obviously, either will be suitable. What I always do is work with all my ingredients on a tray just to keep the work surface clear, uh, clutter free and feel, so you feel a little bit more organised. So I have all of my ingredients on here which I'm going to weigh out. Now, I am very happy to put all my ingredients into little bowls so that I can see that organisation. That does create quite a lot of washing up so if you don't have a dishwasher or if you don't want to use that many pots, or you don't have that many pots, then it may be that you want to weigh as you go, and then the ingredients can go straight into the bowl, the mixing bowl, or the pan, so that you are not creating yourself too much work, because I know from experience that children do not like the washing up aspects of cooking. All that cleaning at the end seems to be where they, they leave it to someone else, or they're very good at delegating. So, I'm going to get this ingredients measured out and then we can get started on now we're on to cooking. So, all my ingredients are weighed out. First thing that I need to do is to prepare my baking tin and preheat the oven. So, what I've already done is put a piece of greaseproof paper to fit the bottom of the baking tin. This will help to get the, tre the um, flapjack or granola bars out at the end. With an off cut, um, that I have. I always just use a little bit of this just to save getting any mucky fingers and I just put a little bit of excess margarine or butter onto the greaseproof paper and then I can use this to grease the tin. Now we want to grease the bottom so that the paper um, sticks and then we want to go around the outside as well to help so that when we're getting the granola bars out at the end that they are not stuck to the side of the tip. Obviously this part can go in thin in a second and then we can put the greaseproof paper down on the bottom so that that sticks in place and that will help the whole process of removing the granola bars at the end. For this recipe we are turning it to gas mark 4 or 180 degrees Celsius depending on whether you've got gas or electric oven. So my oven is now preheated so that will be the right temperature when it's coming into the oven and my baking tray is greased. I'm going to just set that to one side. Now the first job to do is to melt the butter. So I've got my butter weighed out, spoon into a small pan. And what I tend to do is always when I'm melting something and I'm not going to leave the pan, I'm going to have it at the front so that I am in control of this. I can keep it hold and keep it safe. I want to turn it to medium heat. So mine goes up to six. So I'm going to turn that on to number four and I'm going to allow that to melt slowly. So once it's starting to melt, we are going to leave that until this is a complete liquid before incorporating it into the other ingredients. 
So whilst that's melting, I'm going to keep an eye on it. I'm going to tuck my pan handle in so that I don't knock it off because obviously that is hot fat. Once it is melted, it's a liquid which could cause harm. So whilst that's melting, I'm going to get my mixing bowl and I'm going to add in all of the other ingredients into here with the exception of the sugar and the honey. The sugar and the honey will be going into here just to soften them slightly as well. So we're going to just combine everything else. I'm going to talk you through the different ingredients because I have made a couple of changes based on ingredients I've not been able to buy uh, in the shops this week. So I'm adding in the rolled oats, so they are the main ingredient that are going to go in. And the sugar and the honey, as I said, are going to just come over to the side. They're going to go into here. And then I've got ground almonds instead of desiccated coconut. Desiccated coconut is just something that my children don't particularly like. Um, and the ground almonds are a really good substitute. They've just got the same kind of texture. They're going to dry out the moisture to help bind everything together. So ground almonds are going in. My tropical fruit. So we've got some dried apricots, but I've also put some glacier cherries in there as well get all of those into the bowl adding the cinnamon in obviously for flavor so it says um, on the recipe about five milliliters two five um, milliliter table uh, teaspoons so if you want five grams of anything then you're looking at using one teaspoon and then not got pumpkin seeds again demand at the moment quite difficult but I've used chia seeds so they've got a very different texture they're a lot smaller a lot finer grain um, they are an antioxidant, they're really, really good for you. They'll clear, clear out all those free radicals. Also high in fibre, so really good little product there, but a superfood that you can add in that will help um, as well as tasting nice too. So all of those ingredients are in, and then we are going to just mix those together. And they are all ready to then go in with the melted butter in the pan. So. Butter is starting to melt now, so I'm going to add in the sugar and I'm going to add in the honey. Again, this was two 15 milliliter measurements of honey. Um, 15 milliliters or 15 grams is approximately a tablespoon. This is a dessert spoon. A tablespoon is slightly larger in measuring terms, but just in case you're wanting to not have to get scales out if you ever see that, then you can use spoons as measurements. Okay, so one teaspoon is five, and one tablespoon is 15. Now, all those ingredients are in there now. I'm just going to soften these, making sure that they all start to melt together, make the honey will go a little bit more runny as we're mixing this in. And then once we've got that liquid, we can then add in all of these ingredients into the pan. This will melt or um, bind everything together once it's melted, sorry, and then we can simply put it into our baking tray and then we are ready to put it in the oven once we've pat it down. So now the time has come to take the um, granola bars out of the oven. Obviously I said before, two oven gloves are needed. I don't own two oven gloves. So I'm going to use a tea towel. This isn't something I'd recommend for you to do. I would like to see that you're using two oven gloves. So I'm gonna take it out. Moving it safely and closing the oven door. And you should be able to see that the top has slightly risen. Okay, so if you feel it, slightly hard. Now, this is extremely hot all the way around here. You've got to be very, very careful at this point. So you need to put the oven glove on the hand that you would hold it with. If you're right-handed, obviously the right hand needs to be one to be free. Because what we're going to do whilst it's hot is to portion the granola bars. So you can do them into cubes or you can do them into um, strips. You will notice that mine went in the oven with only half and has come out with it filled, filled completely. What I did was I used the rest of the opportunity to get my daughter baking today so that she was able to do a practical activity too. So she made her own version and then we filled the flapjack tin before actually baking it together. So, you're just using a normal knife that you would use to eat your dinner with. I'm going to just press down gently. Don't pull the knife. That will just drag the ingredients because everything is still very soft with it being hot. You just want to be able to go through to create those 
proportions so that when it does cool, you'll be able to get it out easier into even squares. If you uh, try and cut it when it's hard, it will break, it's quite brittle, um, and you won't get the even pieces that you want. It will still taste just as good, but it just means that um, you won't get a nice clean cut. So I'm going to do mine into 12. So for our household, that's um, three snack bars each. So we can have uh, three days worth of snack bars, which is a much cheaper alternative than buying the snack bars in the shops. So I've got it now into the pieces and I'm just going to use a palette knife or if you can use just a, a, a slightly larger knife just to go around the outside just to make sure that as it cools it's not sticking to the side of the baking tin. Again, try not to drag it too much so that you disturb the ingredient, you just want to make sure that it's not stuck to the sides. So now I'm going to leave that to cool and then that is my granola bars ready. Uh, recipe details are below the video for you um, and hopefully this is one that you can try at home. Obviously remembering parental supervision, don't turn a cooker, hob, oven, anything on unless you know that there is a parent in the house and they are aware of what you're doing. If you are younger in age, then make sure that you do have a parent in the kitchen with you. They might be working at this time, it could be that they're sitting uh, close by working, but do have them nearby to get the more difficult tasks um, done for you or with close supervision. Hope you've enjoyed the video, um, I hope that you get baking, and keep yourself busy, um, and the biggest challenge I think will be to get the ingredients. So thank you for watching and enjoy the granola bars.